Volcanoes, canyons, moon surfaces. Dead easy. Yeah, sort of. Hey, yeah, and welcome to Unreal and FX. I know, awful title. In this series, I, an After Effects artist, um, an After Effects user? After Effector? Whatever. This is a series where I, as someone who knows the way around Adobe After Effects, am learning Unreal Engine, because thanks to all the publicity about it, it seems like an awesome way to make 3D environments quickly and easily. And it is. But it's not a 3D modeler, so it's got a pretty steep learning curve. Mainly because it's a game engine and almost all the tutorials are focused on that. If you are brand new to Unreal, it's probably worth checking out the first video in this playlist first. In that I talk you through all the steps needed to get a blank project with a landscape and all the lighting needed. I also covered linking to Quixel Megascans, so likely you've already had some fun creating a flattish 3D environment. But if we take a look at the basic landscape we have to start with, you can see we have a flat plane with hills all around. Before we get into sculpting, I'll just expand the lighting folder in the truly oddly named Outliner panel, which is basically the equivalent of the left hand side of an After Effects timeline, and I'll select Exponential Height Fog. Then below in the Properties panel, which is like After Effects Effects Controls panel, you can see all the values for this Exponential Height Fog, and watch what happens when I mess with the fog density and fog height fall off. And it's this sort of thing that makes Unreal Engine so appealing to filmmakers. Oh, and you may see these error messages pop up in the comp window, I mean the viewport. As far as I can see, these can be ignored. If you prefer, you can type Disable All Screen Messages into this console area. Okay, now let's make a mountain or, I know, a crater. Just before we make all these changes, go to File, Save All. Remember, this is a game engine, so we're actually making a level here, and you can have multiple levels in a game. And I'm prompted to save my level. Like I said in that other video, you can't have spaces and names, but you can have underscores. Okay, now that the housekeeping is done, use this drop down to select Landscape Mode. And now you can select the type of sculpting tool, and they work as you'd expect. The brush size and falloff make a big difference, and you can use the standard undo, Ctrl plus Z, which comes in handy as you get used to this. What is slightly confusing is that the plane of the landscape is slightly below the zero line, so if you select a race, the landscape appears to rise up. But it makes more sense if you use it on an area you've already raised. Don't expect instant perfection, the tools and the falloffs take a lot of getting used to. Ramp is an interesting one. You click on two points and hit enter and it creates a ramp. Erosion helps create more natural looking earthworks. You can also load in textures for your brush. That's sculpting textures. I'm going to talk about painting a little later. And to be honest, sculpting textures are something you can come back to when you're more familiar with Unreal. So that's sculpting. But when I zoom into player level, you don't get a sense of, wow, this is ready to go. Let's switch back to selection mode. Oh, and in the last video I mentioned creating a cube so I could zoom in more easily. What I could have done is just select player start and hit F. That zooms you back to a person level. And you can move this object too, hitting F when it is selected will always return you to it. So if you wanted to create a landscape that looks like a giant beige quilt, well done. But if you wanted it to look more like nature, then we need to texture it. But make sure you hit save all first. I didn't save on my script writing run through and lost all my landscapes when Unreal crashed. Except I might not have. Whenever I reopen Unreal and the project I'm working on, I start on a blank landscape and then I have to choose recent levels. And seeing as I've already interrupted myself, and don't worry, it's not a like and subscribe request, I'm just going to point out all the landscape changes are stored as separate objects in the outliner. I would recommend just leaving it alone though and treating the landscape as a single object. Right, so everything is saved. Now go to the Create drop down and select Quixel Bridge. 
and select download and add to project a texture you like the look of. Make sure the landscape group is selected in the outliner. Then in the properties panel, scroll down until you can see the landscape material. Then drag your chosen texture onto it. If you've grabbed the correct option, the material instance, the block's highlight will turn blue. And wow, that's just done. If you now see areas like this that look artificial, you can go back into landscape mode and tidy them up. Or like me, you could hide those areas with a 3D object. You can double click on each of the elements of the texture and adjust most settings. For my moon texture, I used a rich orange sandy texture and desaturated it. Okay, so we've got one texture. But what if we want a second on some of the landscaping? What do you mean you don't live in a mono texture hellscape? In order to paint on a landscape, we need to make a landscape material. That's not the same as a regular material. We need to add textures to it. Pretty much every tutorial I've found starts with this, but we've got Quixels now, so it's more confusing than it should be. Right click on the content browser and choose material. Name it my painty landscape and then double click it. In the new node pop-up thing, right click on the background and search for landscape layer blend and click the result. To move around the node editor, hold the right mouse button. Scroll wheel handle zooming. Carefully resize the window so we can see the rest of the program. In the content browser, navigate to the folders containing the Quixel textures you want and drag the textures into the pop-up panel. Select the landscape layer blend node so that the properties of the node appear on the left hand side. Expand the layers section and click on the plus icon. This adds an input to the node. And if you expand it, you can now name it. Do the same for each texture. Then using the output pin thing, click and drag a link from the RGB pin of the first texture to the corresponding pin on the layer blend node and repeat for the others. Then on the output pin of the layer blend node, link this to the base color on the bigger node thing. But we've also got normals. So select the layer blend node and hold control and tap C to copy it and tap V to paste a copy and link the normals texture to this and link this to the normal input on the big node thing. Click save and close the material pop-up. From the outliner, I so hate that name, select the landscape group, scroll down to the landscape material and drag in your new material. Switch to landscape mode and next to the sculpt tab, there's a paint tab. And because we've set up the landscape material, those nodes and layers are all here. So select the texture, click on the landscape and... Hey, What? Layer info? What? Oh yeah. Even though we have set everything up, there's yet another step. Next to each of the layers, there's a plus icon. Click on this. Select Weight Blended Layer Normal and save at the prompt. And now select either of the lower textures and start painting on the viewport. The top texture is the base texture. But it looks, well, pants really. So find your landscape material in the content browser. Double click it to open the material editor. Hey, I learned the name. 
in some empty space on the left, right click and search for Landscape Layer Coords and select it. Now link the only output pin to the UV's input pins on your textures. And in the left hand properties, change the mapping scale to 10. Save your changes and leave the editor. And when you paint now, pretty cool, huh? Okay, the throbbing headache that comes with learning has returned, so I'm calling it a day here. You should have enough now to start creating rich, detailed landscapes, especially if you use the search in engine to find water. And you should be able to use Quixel Bridge to find all the Megascans cool models. In the next video, I'm going to show how you can make that last step so super easy you'll be laughing. In my opinion, it's the best bit of using Unreal Engine.